Uh, one of the most difficult things about trigonometry, there are two basically things. Uh, one is getting used to using radian measure, uh, and we're going to talk about radian measure here in a second. And the other is dealing with fractions, because a lot of times radian measure we express in terms of pi. And what that actually means is we're going to use a fraction to represent those things. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at some things that we uh, hopefully know. And here you can see we have a nice little coordinate plane drawn. And we're going to list basically our degrees. So if there's no rotation uh, where your terminal side and your initial side are the same, then that's going to be zero degrees. If you rotate all the way around the circle, then that's going to be 360 degrees. And then from there, as you guys well know, you're well versed in your degree measure. Half of a circle is uh, basically 180. Uh, half of that will be 90 degrees. So each quadrant will be 90 degrees. So starting from here, to go from here to here is 90. This is another 90, 180. So this will be another 90. So that will be 270 degrees. And then one more 90 in terms of our rotation will be 360. And you guys have plenty of experience with, with that, and you know that pretty well. So now we're going to talk about the radian measure, because that's definitely going to change a little bit. So in our radian measure, zero degrees is obviously zero radians. Pretty obvious stuff. I'll give you one more. 360 degrees, it represented by 2 pi. Now from here, what we need to do is basically use that information to help us with the other stuff. So if half of a circle, uh, half of 360 is 180, half of 2 pi will be pi. Okay, and then uh, 90 degrees is half of 180, so therefore if this is, it's not one half of pi, we actually multiply those together to give us pi halves. So what that should tell you is each quadrant is basically pi halves. So this is one half of pi, this is two halves of pi, which is one whole. This would be three halves of pi, so this is three pi halves. And then another half will end up with four pi halves, or two pi. So this is uh, the equivalent measures. These are called our quadrant angles. Quadrant angles. And the reason they're called our quadrant angles is because they terminate on a X or Y axis. So they're at the edge of the quadrant. And as you can see, we have our quadrants labeled at 1, 2, 3, 4. And what we need to do is a couple things, kind of understand what we're talking about in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, of our, um, of where things would lie. You know, to, to end up in the first quadrant, your angle in degrees bet would be between 0 and 90 degrees. Well, in terms of radians, what you're looking for is the fraction of pi to in between 0 and 1 half. So things like 1 fifth, 1 fourth, 1 sixth, 1 third, they would all fall into this category. If you want to be more specific, half of the quadrant, half of this quadrant, would be pi fourths because that's half of one half. So this is pi force. Anything less than pi force would fall here. Anything more than pi force would fall here. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, looking at the next one, you know, for quadrant two, your angle will be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So uh, yeah, if it falls, you know, 120 degrees, 150, uh, 160, 100, they would all fall in quadrant two. In terms of radians, your radian measure in terms of pi it would be one half of pi to one whole. So basically three fourths of pi, uh, two thirds of pi, uh, those would all fall into quadrant two. Now right in the middle, of course, this would be one fourth. So one uh, half plus one fourth, this would be three fourths of pi. So anything larger than three fourths would fall in here, anything less than three fourths would fall here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look in here and say, well, in terms of degrees, anything between 180 and 270 will fall in quadrant 3. In terms of radians, you either want one whole pi or one and a half. Okay? Again, this is going to be a fourth, so it would basically be one and one fourth. So anything less than one and one fourth would fall here. Anything more than one and one fourth would fall in between those two. And then lastly, in quadrant 4, it would be between 270 degrees and 360 or between one and a half pi and two pi. So this right here, this will be one and three fourths of pi. And anything less than that would fall in between here. Anything more than that would fall between one and three fourths and two whole. So just a decent idea of quadrant and radian measure. Uh, the other thing is obviously negative angles. So ob these are all positive angles. Negative angles are gonna be very similar. You just we're gonna rotate in the opposite direction. 
So negative 90, this would be negative 180, this would be negative 270, and then this will be negative 360. So we're going the same amount, just in the opposite direction when you're talking about negative angles.